Premature babies are at increased risk of needing resuscitation uh, with transition after birth because of rapid heat loss, immature organ systems, and smaller blood volume. They're also more vulnerable to hypoglycemia, though it doesn't really impact the resuscitation scenario unless you're looking at spontaneous breathing effort. We need definitely skilled personnel, and in babies less than 32 weeks, a polyethylene plastic bag. Uh, you can review my playlist on thermoregulation to understand why the plastic bag helps because you are keeping the insensible water loss. Uh, whatever is lost is within the bag. You create a highly humid environment. Otherwise, in a very small baby temperature, may lose quickly with evaporation. Uh, we need preterm sized masks and endotracheal tubes and possibly a double zero plate. Delayed cot lamping is very important in a premature baby because the blood volume is on the lower side and uh, the baby is prone for hypotension being a sicker baby. There is an increased risk of IVH if there is hemodynamic compromise. So that's why IVH rate or severe IVH reduces with delayed cot lamping in preterm babies. And uh, I've mentioned this before as well. Speak to your obstetric team that a premature baby is often not going to be active at the time of birth. Just feel the cord pulsation and if it is a normal heartbeat more than 100, please do the delayed cord clamping because this is blood that should uh, be in the baby. The reason it is in the placenta is because the lung is not breathing. Once the lung starts opening up, as I showed you, the lung blood vessels expand and this blood should come back to the baby. Surfactant should be available within quick access if needed and the temperature should be kept 24 degrees if you remember that's fine. If a baby is less than 32 weeks, a polyethylene bag and a thermal mattress should be prepared. If PPV is required, use the lowest inflation pressure necessary to achieve and maintain adequate heart rate. It is preferable to use a device that can provide PEEP. And consider using CPAP immediately after birth if the baby is breathing spontaneously with a heart rate of at least 100. So irrespective of the size of the baby, we can use non-invasive ventilation with CPAP from the labor room effectively and then consider surfactant early if needed. You can review my recent video on pragmatic approach to respiratory management to guide this. And to reduce the risk of neurologic injury, we have to handle the baby gently, avoid positioning the baby's legs higher than the head, avoid high PPV or CPAP pressures, use pulse oximeter and blood gases to adjust ventilation and oxygen, and avoid rapid intravenous fluid infusion. So most of these are components of both the golden hour as well as the uh, IVH prevention bundle. Uh, I've shared the recent video on IVH prevention bundle as well, which you can review on the channel. If there are any videos which I've mentioned, which you're not able to find, please comment and I can share the link there. So uh, you can do labor room CPAP using any suitable interface that you have, and it's easier to transport the baby on uh, in nasal interface and ventilator CPAP rather than holding the TP's device uh, mask on the face while you move. So temperature management, uh, handling the baby, everything is easier. It's easier for the personal concerned as well. So train your team to do this in an effective way.